For many people in China, Chinese New Year paintings or Nianhua in Mandarin are an essential part of the festive decorations of the Chinese New Year. The paintings are either woodcut or painted by hand and are bright in color, red, purple, orange and blue. Featuring a lively atmosphere, they often depict legendary figures from Chinese folklore, such as the God of Wealth and Gods of the Door. This traditional Chinese art has fascinated one particular man from Beijing especially. I have collected a lot of traditional Chinese New Year paintings. I then select the best and most beautiful ones for redesigning. Some of my collections are really amazing. This art collector is called Yin Qi. For almost two decades, he has been collecting, researching, and promoting traditional Chinese New Year paintings. We aim to come up with good cultural products to embody our confidence in our own culture. When we go abroad or when we meet foreign friends, we can say with confidence that these are our products and that they represent our culture. In this edition of Footprints, let's follow Yin Qi to delve into the world of this traditional Chinese folk art and enjoy its beauty, culture and the stories behind it. We are fine-tuning our printing process again and again just to make a perfect product. The color of sample A we just printed out is deeper than that of sample B. We have to compare them and determine which one is better. In a printing house in the northeastern suburbs of Beijing, Yin Qi is directing workers to print out his fine works of a particular artistic genre called Nianhua, which means Chinese New Year paintings. He is meticulous about every step of the creation process, from designing, printing to the end product. His work is time-consuming, but to ensure the quality of his products, he says it's worthwhile. Uh, our busy season begins in August and lasts until after the Chinese New Year. During these five to six months, we go through stages from designing, making drafts, to making proofs, correcting proofs, and then printing out the products. His products target a niche market, people who are interested in traditional Chinese culture and are willing to pay for quality but expensive cultural products. Defining himself as a mover of traditional Chinese culture, Yin Qi really enjoys what he does. He says his products are based on his vast treasure trove of traditional Chinese New Year paintings. I have collected a lot of traditional Chinese New Year paintings. I then select the best and most beautiful ones for redesigning. Some of my collections are really amazing. They are different from the rough and raw Chinese New Year paintings usually seen on the mass market. Yin Qi hails from Liaocheng, Shandong province, a coastal region long known for its traditional Chinese culture and the birthplace of Confucius, one of China's best known and influential philosophers who lived more than 2,500 years ago. Born and raised in Beijing, Yin Qi remembers that in his childhood he often spent the Chinese New Year with his grandparents back in his hometown. When I was celebrating the Chinese New Year in my hometown, I saw my grandma offer a dish of dumplings to a picture before we all sat to eat. She would say some prayers and made worshipping gestures in front of the picture. 
As a child, I thought it was strange and wondered what it meant. Later, I knew the picture was a Chinese New Year painting, which depicted a god of something. Now, in many villages, this tradition is still alive. Yin Qi notes that people of his generation, the late 1970s and 1980s, as well as later generations, have been influenced by modern pop cultures as they were growing up. Many young people, especially those living in big cities, often celebrate foreign festivals such as Christmas and Valentine's Day, as China became more deeply involved with the outside world since the 1980s. As part of this trend, Yin Qi was once steeped in such influences and chose to work in an international environment when he graduated from college. To be specific, he worked as a travel agent, guiding foreign tourists coming to China. But this work experience has taught him an unexpected lesson. In my chats with foreign friends, we talked about each other's cultures. Some of them asked me what my culture was. I told them about Chinese music, poetry, and so on. They said those were what China as a country had. They kept asking me what I already did in my daily life that represented Chinese culture. Their questions triggered my soul searching. As Yin Qi conducted this soul searching, Chinese New Year paintings he had seen in his grandparents' house as a child vividly came back into his mind. I did some research into Chinese New Year paintings. I found out that this folk art was used by people from across China when celebrating the Chinese New Year. Traditionally, Chinese New Year paintings were an integral part of the daily life of Chinese people, especially for those living in the countryside. They pasted such paintings on the gate of their houses and on the interior walls when they celebrated the Chinese New Year. These paintings usually depicted gods of wealth, longevity, safety or happiness. They formed the decorations of the house for the whole year and would be changed for new ones when another new year came. As Yin Qi notes, all Chinese New Year paintings represent the people's longing for a good life and happiness. Rediscovering the beauty of such traditional artworks starting from 2006, Yin Qi embarked on his journey as a collector of such paintings. His earliest collections were a bunch of paintings from Shandong province, the region where his grandparents and ancestors lived. He says he only collected paintings made by traditional methods, including woodblock prints or those drawn all by hand. And he traveled far and wide, visiting various workshops and craftspeople of the folk art. It's only after you visit a region in person that you come to know the distinct features of the local Chinese New Year paintings. Whenever I visit a workshop, I talk with these craftspeople and observe their making process, methods and skills. So I can now say I am rather an expert in this folk art. So far, his collection of paintings amounts to more than 1,000. Many of them were from the late 19th or early 20th century. He cherishes each of them. I have often been asked which my favorite painting is among my collections. It's really hard for me to answer such a question. I like each and every one of them, no matter whether they are old or new. My collections are not only about the paintings themselves, they are also about the culture that the paintings embody including the craftsmanship behind them. Each painting embodies its own craftsmanship and historical information. The collector has catalogued his vast collections according to their subjects, such as those depicting the God of Wealth, Gods of the Door, and so on. And he sometimes generously puts on an exhibition for the public to appreciate. For the Chinese New Year of 2024, which falls on February the 10th, he pastes on the door of his house a pair of paintings depicting Qing Chiong and Yu Che Gong, two gods of the door. 
You might wonder who are Qin Xiong and Yu Chu Gong, and why are they worshipped as door gods? Well, Qin Xiong and Yu Chu Gong were originally two generals of the Tang Dynasty, one of the most powerful and prosperous periods in ancient China. According to a widely accepted legend, the two generals were told by Emperor Taizong to guard his door because he had nightmares in which a ghost harassed him. When the two generals were called, they guarded the emperor's door. Thus, the emperor had a good sleep. The next day, the emperor, not wanting to trouble his two generals, hung portraits of them on either side of his door. Ordinary families soon adopted the imperial custom, putting woodblock prints of the ever vigilant generals on their front gates in the hope of fending off evil spirits. As tradition goes, paintings featuring these two gods of the door are pasted in pairs on the doors of people's houses. In the most widely circulated paintings, Qin Xiong has pale skin and carries two swords, while Yu Chu Gong has dark skin and carries two batons. Now, fast forward to the 21st century and this legend still strikes a chord with many Chinese. For Yin Qi, he is retelling and promoting this legend in his own way. Years ago, the art collector got to know that an antiquarian in Beijing's neighboring Hebei province had a precious set of woodblocks depicting the two gods of the door. I remember I got up early one day, about 5 o'clock, and then I drove for more than four hours and arrived at where the antiquarian was based. The antiquarian showed me the oot blocks. I liked them very much and bought them. Then I went to Wuqiang County and asked local craftspeople to print the oot blocks out. The moment the paintings appeared, I was amazed. That was the first time I saw that the eyebrows of the two gods of the door were depicted in a swan shape. You might wonder why this collector went to Wuqiang County. Well, this county, in the southeast of Hebei province, is a center of traditional craftsmanship of Chinese New Year paintings. Yin Qi says the swan-shaped eyebrows made the paintings stand out and would attract the interest of today's young people. As the woodblocks are not complete, he asked professional painters to restore the incomplete paintings taken out from the woodblocks and they changed the usually white background of the two gods of the door to a grey one dotted with red leaf-shaped spots. Then he used modern printing technologies to mass-produce this pair of traditional paintings. His treatment of this pair of paintings embodies his philosophy about how to inherit traditional Chinese culture. We make use of old things and redesign them so they are in line with modern aesthetics. I think it's not necessary for us to draw a new picture and say this is modern. As he breathes new life into traditional Chinese New Year paintings, Yin Qi says he hopes they will be liked by more and more young people and become an integral part of their lives. In this regard, the art collector says it's important to get children involved to better inherit and promote this traditional art. For the children, when they see the beautiful Chinese New Year paintings in the house, they will feel and know that this is traditional Chinese culture. There needs to be no words to tell them. Yin Qi has made byproducts based on folk art, such as coloring books, to help children better appreciate it. When children fill in the coloring book, they would feel that the picture is beautiful. In this way, they will get a sense of what Chinese New Year paintings are and might develop a lifelong affection for the art, just as what has happened to me. Yin Qi has a teenage son who has been immersed in traditional Chinese culture under his influence. 
我收到一幅新新收到的画的时候，我跟他显摆，哎，爸爸又收了一幅画。When I collect a new painting, I will show it to him. Sometimes he asks me to show him my collections, and he even takes care not to spoil them when he touches the delicate paintings. He says, "Daddy, be careful with the paintings." So his experience with the Chinese New Year paintings has become part of him, and will live with him for the rest of his life. For all the work he has done, Yin Qi says all he wants is to promote Chinese culture. We aim to come up with good cultural products to embody our confidence in our own culture. When we go abroad or when we meet foreign friends, we can say with confidence that these are our products and that they represent our culture. In 2019, Yin Qi began keeping a long, flowing beard, an appearance associated with Chinese tradition. His facial lines are sharp, with a pair of glasses. The appearance is unusual of a modern Chinese man, but it bears a striking similarity to the characters depicted in the Chinese New Year paintings. When we asked him why he grows such a signature beard, he replied that it was because he can save time, as he no longer needs to shave. But intentionally or unintentionally, his appearance simply fits with his image and role as a mover and shaker of traditional Chinese culture, and provokes people's curiosity into him and the stories he could bring. With that, we conclude this edition of Footprints. Thanks for listening. I'm Bob Jones. If you're interested in hearing more about the lives of ordinary but incredible people in China, follow us on your favorite podcast platforms. Just key in "footprints" and you can find more stories anytime, anywhere. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.